Imagine you are playing a game and here is the setup. You're throwing a small party with four guests. Your meeting room is square-shaped and there's an entrance at each corner, northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Each guest must enter using a unique door. And to make this game interesting, at the entrance each guest is handed a unique perfume to wear. Different scents, different molecules, maybe even different colors of fragrance if we imagine them visually. After entering, the guests walk toward the table at the center of the room and sit down. Now here's the complicated part. You yourself enter the room long after all four guests have already taken their seats. You never got to see who entered through which door. Your goal is to figure out which guest entered through the northeastern entrance. But you face two constraints. First, you arrived too late to witness anything. And second, you're not allowed to check any security cameras. The only tool available to you is a strange, futuristic machine, something straight out of a physics experiment. This machine can consume energy, say by plugging it into a power outlet, and it has the power to reduce the entropy of the room. And here is the big question. How do you use this entropy reduction machine to identify the guest who came through the northeastern entrance? How can the concept of entropy in physics help you answer this question? And if we do figure out the answer, is it possible to take this approach and actually use it to build a machine learning model? The surprising answer is yes. And the machine learning model that emerges from this way of thinking is one you might have already heard of. The decision tree. If you're curious to see how reducing entropy helps you find who entered the northeastern gate and how this idea can literally train a machine learning algorithm, stay with me. Did you know that every machine learning model, from simple regression to image generating models like DAL-E, can be explained by a single elegant equation? If you're interested in learning machine learning in a unified way, visit our webpage at compuflare.com. This is a unique place to understand every machine learning model through one elegant equation from a physics-inspired perspective. In addition to the courses, we offer end-to-end -end intermediate and advanced projects that develop your skills, experience, and online presence, helping you land top industry roles. Visit compuflare.com and start building your data science career. Let's start with the concept of entropy. Imagine you're standing in a closed room holding a bottle of perfume. You twist the cap just a tiny bit, and suddenly the scent starts to escape. At first, only the air right around the bottle smells like anything. But wait a few seconds, and the scent spreads. Give it a minute, and the entire room is filled with that fragrance. Why does this happen? This is entropy in action. At the moment you open the bottle, almost all perfume molecules are confined to one tiny region near the nozzle. It's a very ordered arrangement. The molecules are clustered, almost no variation in their location. There are very few ways the molecules could be arranged while still looking essentially like all the perfume is in this tiny corner. This is what physicists call a low entropy state. When there are few microscopic possibilities to arrange the molecule's positions, entropy is low. As soon as the molecules escape the bottle, they start moving randomly, chaotically, bouncing into air molecules, walls, and each other. They wander outward. They drift in all directions. And as time passes, they fill more and more of the room. After a few minutes, the scent is uniform everywhere. Now there are countless microscopic arrangements of positions of perfume molecules that all look like the whole room smells nice. This is a high entropy state. When there are many microstates, entropy is high. And why doesn't the perfume unspread? Technically, it could. There is nothing in the laws of physics preventing all the molecules from randomly wandering back to the nozzle area by chance alone. But the number of microscopic paths that would lead to this tiny clustered configuration is astronomically small. Meanwhile, there are millions and millions more microstates in which the perfume is spread around the room. So, it's not that the perfume tries to spread, it's simply overwhelmingly more probable. Number of possibilities are way too high at high entropy state that don't leave any chance for those very few configurations at low entropy states. So, what does entropy measure? In simple terms, it tells you how many microscopic arrangements correspond to the same macroscopic picture. Or even simpler, entropy measures how mixed things are. The more mixed, 
the higher the entropy. Now let's return to our party game. Imagine that the perfume each guest wears is made of an enormous number of tiny particles, and for our benefit, let's color code the molecules of each perfume, maybe red, blue, green, and orange. When the four guests enter through their four different entrances, there are four little clusters of same colored particles at the four corners of the room. This is a very low entropy state, four neat, tidy clumps. Once the guests walk to the center and sit down, the perfume particles escape their bodies, drift around, and begin to random walk inside the room. Each colored cloud spreads. The clusters blur. The molecules mix. Momentary patches might appear due to randomness, but the overall trend is clear. The colors blend, the information about the corners fades, and the distribution becomes uniform. In a closed room with no preferred direction, the most probable macrostate is the well-mixed one, which corresponds to the greatest number of microstates, that's maximum entropy. The direction of increasing entropy gives us an arrow of time. We go from a special, low-entropy state toward a typical, high-entropy state. But remember, we have a machine in this problem. Although the second law of thermodynamics says entropy in an isolated system always increases, due to the machine, our room is not isolated. The machine can consume energy and reduce the entropy in the room. Reducing entropy is like playing time backward. If you could reverse the entropy of the perfume molecules, you'd literally watch the random cloud shrink back into the four clusters. Since perfume bottles are still at their original entrances, although hidden from your eyes, the lowest entropy state is such that each colored perfume would return to its exact original corner. Once the machine brings each perfume back to the exact location where it originated, you now know exactly which color came from the northeast corner. And since earlier you smelled all the guests and learned who is wearing which perfume, you've effectively solved the puzzle. You can determine who entered through the northeastern door. Now let's switch gears and see how this idea is used in machine learning. In physics, entropy in an isolated system tends to increase due to the second law of thermodynamics. In data science, we have something similar called the maximum entropy principle. It says that if you collect data while your system, say the housing market, is stable, your data set naturally reflects a maximum entropy state. Every measurement you make of the system adds a data point, also called a sample, to your data set. And because the system sits in equilibrium, the data set is as mixed as it can be. To classify samples, we would like to give them labels, just like the colored perfume molecules. For example, houses with similar prices, similar ages, and similar numbers of bedrooms might belong to the same group, and we assign them the same label. If you're given the age and price of a new house and asked to predict the number of bedrooms, you're essentially asking, what color should I assign to this sample? In a maximum entropy data set, samples of different colors are mixed. Our goal is to separate them, to reduce the entropy of the data set by grouping them into purer subsets, where all samples ideally have the same label. When we've successfully rearranged the data set so that samples of the same label cluster together, like having all red molecules at one corner and all blue at another, we've reduced entropy of the data set. And just like the example of perfumes where the machine consumed electricity to reduce physical entropy, in this case we use our computer to reduce data set entropy. And the machine learning model that does this systematically is called the decision tree. So how does a decision tree exactly work? A decision tree is trained by recursively splitting data samples into smaller and purer subsets. It kind of works the way humans make decisions. If the weather is sunny, go hiking, otherwise stay home. At the top, we have the root node, which contains all data points and therefore has the highest entropy. At the bottom, we have the leaf nodes, which are ideally pure. Each leaf contains samples of only one class. We quantify the disorder in each node using entropy, just as in physics, given by the following formula. Here, K is the total number of possible classes. In the perfume example, K is 4. The term P sub K is the probability of class K in that node, estimated simply as the fraction of samples in that node that belong to class K. A decision tree begins with all data in the root node. It tests each feature column in the dataset. For each feature, 
it looks at all its unique values in that column. For each unique value, it splits the dataset into two groups of nodes, those with feature values less than the unique value, and those with feature values greater. We simply call these two groups the left and right nodes. For each split, we compute the entropy of the left node and the entropy of the right node using the same equation as before. The only difference is each node now have fewer data samples. So probabilities are different. Then we combine them using a weighted sum based on the number of samples in each node. This weighted sum will be called impurity. It is represented by the following equation. We test this split for each unique value of each features and keep record of the total entropies of the prospect child nodes. The split that results in the lowest weighted entropy is selected. That feature and threshold become the decision rule at that node. We will find the rest of the decision rules by repeating this splitting process for each child node, building the tree downward until we reach pure leaf nodes, low entropy subsets where all samples share the same class. Once the tree is built, predicting for a new sample is simple. You follow the rules down the tree. Does it go left or right at each split? Eventually, you arrive at a leaf node. The class of that leaf node is the model's prediction. Now let's zoom out. Can we fit decision trees into a physics-inspired probabilistic equation like the following simple equation? Right now, there is no known formal connection. But here is an intriguing possibility. Imagine that, like diffusion models, we start with a flat free energy, which we will call F, essentially a pure noise state. Then we compute entropy using the following equation. But instead of using the fraction of classes in each node, we use the Boltzmann distribution. Now we test small changes to F and choose the ones that reduce the entropy the most, just like selecting splits in a decision tree. We repeat this iterative entropy reduction process until the entropy approaches zero. At this point, F is no longer flat. It has learned a structure that encodes the governing probability of the dataset. Using this trained probability distribution, we could compute expectation values of target variables and make predictions. If you are crazy enough to be willing to explore such ideas, Create a free user account on our website to get notified of future live events discussing such directions.